in 2004, Shri P. Chidamran, the then finance minister, is on record to say that he has inherited a very strong economy. At that time, the growth rate was over 8 percent. Inflation was around 4 percent, 4 and a quarter percent. Foreign exchange reserves were robust compared to the size of the economy at that point of time. All fiscal parameters were in control. The macro economy was strong. Fiscal deficits were down. Revenue deficits were down. And India was a beacon of hope for the country. If I may quote from his budget speech given to Parliament introducing the budget for the year 2004-05, the then Honorable Finance Minister had said, the economic fundamentals appear strong and the balance of payments is robust. And he had talked going forward about sustaining the then growth, the then production and value addition and take it forward in the years to come. He had also spoken about his government being committed to strike a fine balance between the three mutually reinforcing objectives of growth, stability and equity. What did the UPA do in the 10 years that they were in government? Of course, uh, I can ask a question that I have read 10 speeches of the UPA government. Never once has there been a mention of bringing in a legal guarantee for MSP. Never once did they speak about trying to uplift the poor by giving them free homes, giving them free insurance, giving them free food grains, or ensuring that every household has access to electricity, has access to cooking gas, LPG cylinders, has access to clean drinking water, has access to digital connectivity, has access to toilets. And in 10 years of the UPA government, they brought the nation down to a growth rate of about 4.4% that was inherited by Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi. Inflation at spiraling highs for the last few years of the UPA government in UPA 2. In some years, inflation was in double digits. Core food inflation had gone up to over 13 percent. And they left behind for Prime Minister Modi. Instead of a strong economy, which the UPA inherited in 2004, a fragile economy, which the world looked down upon as a fragile five economy, one of the weakest economies in the world, with very, very weak macroeconomic fundamentals. In 2014, Mr. Chidambaram, Mr. Rahul Gandhi, Shrimati Sonia Gandhi ji, the then chairperson of the UPA, who was micromanaging the affairs of government through the back door, left behind for the country high fiscal deficits, 
high inflation, high interest rates, low growth, very low foreign exchange reserves. Some of the reserves were propped up by artificially borrowing non-resident FC and RB loans at exorbitant interest rates just to temporarily shore up foreign exchange. In every respect, the 10 years of the UPA were a failed experiment, reflected a failed government, reflected a failed governance model, and brought the country and the people of the country to their knees in terms of quality of life, in terms of equity, which he spoke about, in terms of inclusive growth, in terms of ensuring the welfare of the farmers, the welfare of the poor, a better future for the MSMEs, And we saw crony capitalism at its worst with corruption scandals surfacing regularly during their period and not small corruption scandals. At that point of time, to have a Colgate of 1,86,000 crores where the Congress party gave irregular allotments to their cronies, business friends of coal mines, valuable national resources, free of charge, without any due process. And the Supreme Court had to cancel over 190 coal blocks in September 2014. Clearly, putting the mark of approval on the irregular and corrupt practices of the Congress party. One after another corruption scandals tumbled out of the UPA regime and when we came to 2014 Mr. Chidambaram, again finance minister, was trying to justify the failure of their government by talking about world economic growth being low, falling, the global risks mapped by international agencies, the f acknowledging the failure of his government in achieving fiscal consolidation, price stability, self-sufficiency in food, or reviving the growth cycle by justifying it on global factors. When speaking about the state of economy, and I quote from his speech, he says in Paris 6, let me begin with the good news. The fiscal deficit for 13-14 will be contained at 4.6% of GDP. I am quoting from his speech. The UP had taken fiscal deficit right up to 9.1%. And the good news was it is down to 4.6%. After nearly five years. More importantly, he is talking of current account deficit being contained a little bit and adding 15 billion to foreign currency reserves.